friends, Mrs. Siri here. Today we're going to read from our purple book. So you'll need to get your purple book and follow along with me. We're going to turn to page 250. Here's page 250. We actually need 251. We're going to look at this page over here. Before we get started with that, our job this time while we're reading is to make some connections. Now remember from in the past, we've done a couple stories where we've made connections. The first thing we have to do is think about what the text is about. The author writes to us for a certain reason, and we need to figure out what does the text or the words the author is using say? What are they telling us? The second thing that we do when we're making connections is ask ourselves, how does this fit with what I know about my own life, my own experiences, or maybe other people that I know, and maybe even the world? So we can ask ourselves, it makes me think of, and what does it make you think of? The last thing that we need to do when we're making connections is to think about how the connection helps us to understand the text or to understand the message that the author is trying to tell us. So we can think about it going, now I understand and what the author's saying. All right, let's take a look at this story. This is actually a web-based news article. So that's why it looks a little bit different than most of our stories. You can see that it's got the top part of the web, like you would see on a computer or on your iPad. It is based off of an article on the internet. It tells about events that really happened. So it is a true story, a nonfiction. It's not made up. Let's find out what it is. Iraqi children get wheelchairs and big smiles by Carol Jordan and Arwa Damon. This is done in Baghdad, Iraq through CNN. Mothers and fathers hold their helpless children in their arms. Other parents carry their teenage kids everywhere. Some parents in Iraq do this every day. It's because their children cannot walk. Oh, boy, that's kind of a sad thing if they can't walk. I'm glad that we can, but we know that others can't. Hmm. What do the sentences tell you about these families? They tell me that they might be a little fearful for their kids and they want to help them. Why do the parents treat the children so gently? Because it says they help those children to hold them in their arms and they carry their teenage kids. It's because they need the help. All right, let's see what else happens with these children. Iraqi children get wheelchairs and big smiles. Brad Blosser decided to help these families. He started a special program. It gives free wheelchairs to Iraqi children. Blosser said, I'm going to pause here for just a second because I want to show you guys these quotation marks. Check them out. Whenever you come across these in text, it is telling us that this is something that the person said. It's not the author's thought. It's whoever they were talking about or their character that they were writing about. In this instance, this author was writing about Brad Blosser. And this is exactly what he said. Let's see if we could read it like he would be saying it. The parents realize the gift that is being given to their children. They reach out and hug you. Okay, may not sound exactly like him, but you got the idea. This child has a disease called polio. She gets a new wheelchair. Let's stop and think for a second about this quote from him. We read it the way that he would say it, but what is he trying to tell us? He's telling us that he's helping these kids and the parents are really happy for it. They're so excited that their kids get the wheelchairs that they want to hug him. Now, do you think that the picture helps to kind of show what's going on? It is. She's getting a new wheelchair and they're holding it and helping her. They are helping her to be able to move about. Let's keep reading. Let's look at this page. 
The children also say thank you. Blossom remembers one boy who couldn't move his legs or his arms. But when we sat him in his chair, he gave us the thumbs up. There was the quotation marks again. So again, it was Mr. Blosser telling us he couldn't move his legs or arms, but when he sat in his chair, he gave us the thumbs up. And look at the picture. He's even given the thumbs up in the picture. Let's keep reading. Iraqi Children Get Wheelchairs and Big Smiles, page three. One father had carried his son six miles to get a wheelchair. There's this quotation. Let's go back to using his voice. People rushed over to take the boy from his arms, Blossa remembers. And he said, no, I've been carrying this child all my life. I can carry him the last 100 yards to receive his wheelchair. Let's read the caption because this is an amazing story of a father who was kind of a hero to the kid for carrying him. If you think back to last week's hero's word. A father carries his son. They are going to get a wheelchair. Brad Blosser works to help Iraqi parents to improve their children's lives. Since 2005, his program has given out nearly 750 free wheelchairs to families in need. Wow, that's amazing. 750 free wheelchairs to people who needed them. Now those kids can get around and the parents, they can take them places without having to carry them everywhere. Now let's go back to this page for a second. And why was his father having to carry his son all the way? He wants to carry him that last hundred yards because he said, I've done it all his life. I can finish this. Think back to what we read here. Do you remember how many families have been helped? If you said 750, you were right. 750 free wheelchairs have been given to families. So that's 750 families that have gotten help. Wow, what a cool story. Makes me wonder, what does it mean to help others? How can you change someone's life by helping them? Think about those questions. When you get your answers, share them with your teacher at the next Zoom meeting that you have or at a time that they say is okay. I can't wait to hear what you guys come up with how we could change somebody's life by helping them.